Brisket. Brisket. Knife. Knife. Flamethrower. Flamethrower. There's only two kinds of pitmasters in this world. Those with flamethrowers and those with matches. We just made a deal. Loser switches. Yeah. We're making briskets. If the Kamado Joe brisket that James is gonna make is better, I have to switch to Team Red. When it's better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if it's I not, lose, yeah. right. I have to go back to green. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So a lot on the line here. I uh, may have gotten myself into something I shouldn't be in by talking crap about James <laughs> Kamado Joe's, but I'm confident. Like a yeah. Kamado is a Kamado is a Kamado and there's gimmicks, but it's all Kamado cooking. I think I think mine's gonna be at least as good, if not better. Well, tell that to people at Harvard who designed the slow roller. I think yeah. it's gonna make a big difference. <laughs> We're still gonna be friends after this, right? Yeah, no matter what. No yeah. matter what. When Even you have your Kamado if you've Joe. Got green, yeah. big green eggs. When you have your Kamado here. Joe, yeah. All right, so we started this last night. James managed to find two pretty close to identical briskets, 14 weighed pounds, about four, yeah. yep, 14 yeah. pounds. We uh, trimmed them wow. right next to each other, got really aggressive with the trim, got them down to probably nine or 10 pounds. Exactly. We used seasoning that is a traditional brisket seasoning the way that James likes to do seasoning, right. but we used the same bottle, right? Yep. Lowry salt, garlic, and uh, fresh cracked pepper. That's right. Uh, right out of the same bottle, same amount of rub on. And now we're getting ready to do battle. So we had to probably agree to some other rules. Yeah, right? that's right. You like to cook hot. Yeah, right? I, if I was to do it, I'd go probably 270. And when I cook brisket, I like to do really low and slow 225. Meat in the middle, the 250. I can accept that. All right, 250. Yeah. We're cooking with your Fogo charcoal because right. we're at your house. Yep. Apple, cherry, Let's pecan, what do you want to do? do apple. All right, yeah. we'll do apple wood. I'm going to set up my grill to make the best possible brisket. I'll do the same. All right, good, good luck, luck to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get this grill set up. So I'm working with a large big green egg. I'm gonna use flavor wood and then uh, let's get some charcoal on top of this. And then I'll put a couple more chunks of apple on top and then we'll uh, go ahead and fill it up. And then uh, time to get it lit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the convector in here, put a smokeware water pan in here with some hot water on top of it, let the water come up to temperature as well. We'll go ahead and throw the grate on here and let the whole thing come up to temperature. So we're gonna try to get this up to uh, 250 degrees we're cooking at. All right, James, how'd you set up? So try to keep things similar to you. So I'm gonna go for an indirect setup using my deflector plates. Since right. I saw you're using water, that's not something that I would normally do, but I've added a water pan so that at the end of this test, we don't say, well, was it the water Mine or Mine was more else? moist or whatever. Okay, That's good. right. All right. And so to do that, I've just reversed my, uh, my double indirect setup. So I put the deflectors on the basket, water pan, slow roller, uh, which is what's gonna give me that uh, extra smoke circulation, I think. You put hope. my brisket way out front. We're gonna run right at 250 as well. All right, good luck. Right. Good luck. May the best brisket win and I can't wait to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this brisket on here. So I'm gonna put it on with the point towards the back. Then, like you saw me do on the Harry Sue video, I'm gonna put some wood chunks underneath here, same applewood we use for smoking, and I'm gonna put them underneath the brisket to try to create an arc so there's no place for the moisture to pool. That's gonna help this bark to develop evenly, not have any kinds of problems on here because it's pretty important that we win. Now, James, I'm sure is gonna be using all kinds of uh, fancy techniques, his slow roller, and he's been talking a lot about this double indirect. I don't think any of that stuff's gonna make a difference. I mean, we'll find out, but I've made a whole bunch of briskets this way, and I know that this is gonna come out really, really good. All right, we're looking good for about 90 minutes in. Looks like I got a little pooling going on up here, so maybe I didn't put enough wood chunks in. Let me, uh, before we spritz, put some more in there. So I'm just gonna lift this a little higher. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I don't need a lot of spritz. I'm a little dry over here, so I'm gonna get the sides here. Same thing over here. All right, I'm pretty happy with how this is going, so I'm just gonna let it keep rolling. 
We're at three hours. Uh, I just heard James over there checking his brisket and making happy sounds. I don't know whether they're for my benefit, but he seems pretty happy with how he's going. Let's see how we're looking. So we got a lot of color on the side here. I'm not thrilled with how the bark is developing up top. I still got a little bit of pooling going on up there. I don't think it's drying out much. I'm gonna use just a little bit of ACV on the sides again. We are not ready to wrap at three hours. I anticipate we're probably another, at least one more check, maybe two checks before we've got a fully developed bark there. And I hope that we're not drying out here. I don't know. I'm hoping that James making those happy sounds is just uh, him positioning and trying to make me feel bad, but we'll see. I'll be back in an hour and a half. All right, James looks like he's up to something. He's recording his video over there. Let's go see what he's doing. Okay, so we've been on a couple hours now. We want to take a look at our bark. So that is starting to look really nice. So I think I'm going to give this a spray. This is just a mix of apple cider vinegar and water. And we will also pull out these wood chunks so we can get nice even doneness now that I'm not worried as much about the pooling. That looks good. And this is about the spot normally where we run out of smoke on our smoking wood. So I'm going to now add a couple pellets into our ash drawer. Let me move the camera for that. Grab a handful of pellets. And I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a head start using my sous vide gun here. This will just shorten the time that it's gonna take for these to combust and put off smoke, especially since we just sprayed. We want, we want the smoke to uh, be there when the brisket is damp to absorb more smoke flavor. All right, James, let me ask you a question. Yeah. So I've seen you do this before. Yes. I just put layers of flavor wood. So as it burns down, That's right. I should get enough flavor. And like the briskets I turn out on the Big Green Egg, they're rock star briskets, right? Yeah. Like between you and me, like this isn't gonna really make a big difference, right? Well, I trust you on the rock star briskets. I've I had four eggs before I ever had a Joe for 10 years. So I know the egg is gonna turn out a rock star brisket. So since it's gonna be a game of inches, I wanna give it everything I got. And so I think this little steps like this are gonna be part of the difference maker when we're all said and done. I don't see it. Since I got I it, hope, I got it, I'm gonna yeah, use it. I hope you're wrong. I hope I'm right. All right, I am uh, not really happy with what I just saw over there. His brisket looked really good and uh, he's maybe pulling ahead. So we gotta do some things to try to catch up and uh, get back in the lead. So, uh, you know, we saw him pull his wood chunks. I've got a lot of great color over here, but I'm not thrilled with the color on top or on the other side. So I think instead of pulling the wood, I'm gonna move it around to the other side. So maybe I can get some more color over there. And uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive with the apple cider vinegar and water over here. Fingers crossed guys, I really do not want to end up having to get rid of my big green egg and replace it with a Kamado Joe. So hopefully this makes the difference. It's been a half hour since I saw you and uh, I'm still worried. Like I saw James's brisket and how it looked. Now James is cooking fat side up the whole way. He thinks his double indirect setup is gonna protect the bottom from heat. And I'm cooking fat side down now because at the beginning, I really want the fat to protect the, uh, the meat. But at this point, I think I can safely flip over. The competition isn't about the prettiest brisket. The competition is about the best tasting brisket. I think this is gonna give me better color and I think I'm gonna get better flavor and a better bark that's set on the other side. So let me just give a little bit of apple cider vinegar to this fat side here. I expect that this is gonna settle down over the next hour and then I think I'll be time to put it in a boat then. All right, be right back. So I'm gonna transfer our brisket over to the foil. We're gonna put this in a boat so we can not only protect the bottom from getting overdone, but make sure we capture some of that tallow. You're gonna yep. boat already? We're boating already. We're only three and a half hours in, James. It's boat time, my friend. Good looking brisket, but is that bark set? We're gonna to continue to be able to set it uh, as we bump the temperature up and really make sure that we render this into nice, squishy, yellow rendered fat. Back on we go.
All right, we're at just under five hours and yeah, you can see the bark is setting. I think this is the right time for me to get this thing into the boat. I think James might have been a little aggressive about his. I don't think he got as much smoke as I did. This looks really good. I think that was a critical mistake. I think he's given too much credit to that slow roller giving extra smoke. I think we're gonna end up with the tastier brisket here. I'm so excited about moving James over to Team Green. I saw James throw uh, flavor wood uh, that he had in here drying out into uh, his ash drawer. I don't have an ash drawer. I think maybe I can just uh, toss them in here and have them have the same impact. I don't know if I need it. I don't know if I need any more flavor. All right, so now I'm gonna open up my top vent quite a bit, open up the bottom a little bit, and uh, I wanna get this up over 300 degrees and kind of power through the uh, rest of the cook. So I'll see you when it's time to have this thing come off. All right, we've been in the boat for about three hours, about eight hours total so far. And uh, yeah, this is tender back here. Let's check the point. Yeah, we are done. So we are probing super tender. It's got that skippy smooth peanut butter that Harry Sue talks about feel all over. It's got a lot of juices that I've retained in this boat. So looks like that was a smart idea. And I'm gonna let this rest open. I'm gonna let that continuation cooking go for about 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and wrap this. James has a technique that he uses to wrap, and I'm gonna do that where we're gonna use foil and a towel and a cooler. I'll be right back and I'll show you that. All right, we're 15 minutes into resting. I'm gonna pull this out, and you're gonna see a lot of juices that we captured here in our foil boat. And now I'm gonna position my brisket this way and then really slowly, I'm gonna rehydrate the brisket, just pouring this basically tallow back over before this final wrap. You can see the meat is just absorbing that fat back in. Look at this bark, look at this brisket. I think it's gonna be so juicy inside, this isn't gonna matter. Now I'm gonna wrap as tight as I can. I'm gonna come across, I'm gonna pull this tight and push the meat back down. All right, we should not have much excess air there. And now I'm gonna roll it again into a towel. Over, over, and over. We've got his brisket in there. Clearly my brisket is a top. And there they will sit for an hour until it's time for the big green egg to crush James's, I mean, the Kamado Joe's brisket. How we doing? Oh, hey James. Sorry. Talking smack? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 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 I'm about done. We'll be right back. Look at the bark, look at the jiggle. Ooh, look at the jiggle. You guys ready to see? I'm pretty sure we got a winner here. All right, I'm gonna take a taste. Don't tell James. Ow! What are you? Nothing. You said meet you in 15 nothing. minutes. What? Doing, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> that doesn't look right. like nothing. No, it looks like a winning brisket is what it looks like. Look at wow. this. Look give, at me, this. give me a taste. You want to taste it before yours. Is it going to affect your attitude when you hit record for yours? Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. It's a mighty fine brisket. Dude, I think this is a winner. I think you could be in trouble. I knew it was going to be close. I've had a big green egg for 10 years before, and I know they do a mighty fine brisket, and this is uh, no exception to that rule. This is a good brisket. I have, I have a question for you. Yeah. Like, I know what you're gonna replace these with, but where are you gonna find a green pizza oven? All right, it's on. I'm gonna glove up. <laughs> I'll meet you over there. James's video comes out in three days after this one, so if it's up here right now, watch it right now, because I think you're gonna like it and wanna see how this thing ends. I know I wanna see how it ends. If not, I'm gonna put a link down here to subscribe to James's channel. Make sure you subscribe, smash that notification bell so you know when that video comes out, you're not gonna wanna miss it. And I will see you over there.